more than 20 inches of rain, around $50 billion in damage across the Carolinas, 11 events rescheduled or canceled across all fall sports. Hurricane Florence threw a haymaker at Robeson County and the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. The region was still bouncing back from Hurricane Matthew's 2016 devastation. Now campus, faculty, staff, and students focus on recovery once again. UNCP Chancellor Robin Cummings says Robeson County is special in its ability to heal quickly. So yeah, I grew up about three miles down the road from the university and always known the community. And sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. But each time after Matthew, as well as after Florence, the community just pulled together. You know, I watched as people formed uh, uh, committees to go out and to get food. We, the Emergency Operations Center down in Lumberton came together immediately. We actually learned a lot of good lessons from Matthew that helped us with Florence. And so the, the Emergency Operations Center formed a, a lot more rapidly than it did the last time. People got in line to start helping right away. They knew what was coming for Florence and, and pulled together. So it's that sense of community spirit that cohesiveness that formed any time it seems like there's a common enemy we we always fight together and that's what happens in Robertson County with both these with both Florence as well as with Matthew overall Braves fans across the region and state were hit hard by Florence with more than 40 people losing their life to the storm thousands being displaced or coming home to damage and destruction UNCP served as a headquarters to aid those in the region in need during Florence even before the rain started, um, we had responders calling here and wanting to know if they could stage out of our university, which we had done with Matthew, and so it was sort of expected that we would do the same with Florence. And so we were contacted, and we had people who showed up the night before the rain started from Colorado, a search and rescue team, and they came in, and they're so professional, they immediately started cleaning up the place, getting it exactly the way they wanted it, putting their equipment in place, setting up their command center and so forth. And the next day, folks from Oklahoma, the next day, National Guard came in. Eventually, the FBI sent a squad down here for various reasons. And, and so, yeah, we had, at one point, we had over 200 uh, first responders and volunteers from other organizations here on campus. Leading up to the storm's arrival, UNCP took proactive steps to be ready for potential danger. Throughout hurricane season and, and really um, throughout the year, we have staff and personnel who are constantly monitoring the weather situations and inclement weather and adverse weather and the possibility and threat of that. So we're in close contact with the National Weather Service out of Wilmington. Uh, they start really early preparing us and planning for storms like this to come. We started our conversations about a week ahead of time, a little bit more than that. We started monitoring the storm as soon as it formed out in the Atlantic and then when the path became certain that it was going to come towards us, we really started kicking into gear. We have a small emergency operations committee that initiates when the threat becomes clear, and that began um, a little bit more than a week before the storm. So we initiated communication with our campus community the Sunday before the storm, the week before the storm, and the first official action of the university was announced on Monday, the Monday before the storm hit that week. Hurricane Matthew, which struck 23 months ago, turned out to be a great teaching tool to help UNCP keep students safe from Florence. So after Matthew came through our community, we did an extensive after action report as a university and we learned a lot of lessons from that. We learned about our communication process. We learned about how we could better prepare our facilities and our, our buildings and what are those t steps that we could take. That helped us, I think, mitigate some more damage on campus and helped us ultimately warn students and warn our faculty, warn our staff, you know, this take the storm very seriously and let's get you to safety. Um, let's get you to the safest place. You know, we knew going into this that some of our students, their safest place would be on campus, particularly those students that are from the coastal regions of North Carolina. So we did have a handful stay, and then our, sh our priority shifted to let's make sure that those students that are on campus, let's make sure that they're safe and they're taken care of. So after Matthew, we learned what steps we could put in place to keep those students safe, to keep them taken care of, to make sure that their needs were all met throughout the storm and 
after the storm, if we had an extended long-term power loss, um, if we had extensive flooding, we knew exactly what we needed to do to take care of them while they were here, and then to make sure that they got what they need to get up and running again. Classes and campus activities went through a 13-day hiatus due to the storm. Everything resumed Tuesday, September 25th. Campus cleanup was relatively quick thanks to outside helping hands. Our sister institutions were great. Chapel Hill, NC State, uh, Asheville, East Carolina, A&T all sent resources to us and this was during the cleanup period especially uh, that allowed us to clean up our campus and get it back into order fast. Over 100 folks showed up, they had their own equipment, they started cleaning up, they got the debris up and it was gone and so we were able to, able to open our campus up within a week which otherwise I think it would have taken two, maybe three weeks, given our resources had we had to rely on them solely. So I had a lot of support from our fellow institutions, and more importantly, or most equally importantly, we had the first responders who came in and rescued literally uh, dozens, perhaps hundreds of people over those following days. Looking forward, there are still steps to be made towards bringing everything back to normal. It's a process. We, um, we lost a lot of momentum with, with the hurricane. Right before the hurricane, we had just had a fantastic result from NC Promise, almost 900 students. We had had um, the formation of our College of Health Sciences, so a lot of things were clicking right before the hurricane. So we lost some momentum. Our goal is to get that mo momentum back. I think the biggest thing we can do for our students is to is to, cont to get them back into classes, but also to get the infrastructure here on campus ready. We've had a lot of water damage to buildings. That infrastructure needs to be repaired. We, um, we need to also reach out and help our students and our staff. We have students whose homes were flooded again after Matthew just 23 months ago. And so we want to help those students. We want to help our staff. We want to help our community. So we have gr students here who are going out into the community to assist. And so just to try to help everyone to get back to that normal. Cummings hopes UNCP can be a beacon for those in the community looking for an escape from Florence's wrath. The Braves will have the Distinguished Speaker Series of events available for free, and of course UNCP sports are back in action. So we need to be the people's university. We need to be the University of Robeson County. We've got Martin Sensemeyer to come in, our first speaker. That'll be free. We've got a football game on Saturday. We want folks to come out and enjoy that game. Um, we have a Pembroke Day next uh, week coming up. And last year, I think well over 2,000 people attended that. So those events to sort of help folks to sort of focus away from all the stress and strain that they've been through for the last few days and begin to look forward. There are UNCP students and staff still suffering. Assistance from a relief fund is available. You can apply online at uncp.edu forward slash relief. Contributions are also being accepted for the fund at the link. Any contribution would be important to helping Brave Nation get back on track. And if you go to that site, it gives you an option to support the staff or to support the students, obviously to support both if you want to. But that money, I can promise you, will go to directly impact people who have been impacted by, by Florence. Additionally, UNCP is partnering with the Office for Community and Civic Engagement on campus in helping those in need. At tonight's football game, there is a box truck station at the entrance gate collecting supplies that will be distributed to those in need. UNCP hosts Newberry at 7 p.m. at Grace P. Johnson Stadium. The athletic department and CCE are seeking new underwear and socks, cleaning supplies, water, and non-perishable goods to be donated. Very proud of the university, proud of the way we responded. I was proud of my team, uh, the way we responded during that time to come together and, and communicate. But just proud of, of the way the university has always sort of uh, is, is taken on that, that mantle, that role of being a leader in the community and trying to help people through a very, very difficult time. UNCP football had two games fall prey to Florence. September 15th's game at Catawba and last Saturday's scheduled game at Tusculum in Tennessee, both canceled. 
Not only did the Braves miss out on a couple games, they also didn't practice together as a team for a couple of weeks. It's, uh, it was one of those things where uh, it kind of takes you by surprise a little bit, although we've been in a hurricane situation before, so uh, there was some familiarity, although you don't want to get used to it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's very uh, disappointing not to play. You know, you, you have very limited opportunities, uh, 11 games in a season, and to have two of those lost and not able to go out there and compete and to do what you work so hard to do, uh, that's very difficult to handle. Now, uh, you know, we try to see the positives in it, and, and when we brought the team back, uh, there, there's some good things that we can build on here. Uh, there's very rarely that you get really a two-week break from actually hitting an opponent, and we've got to use that to our advantage of being fresher and um, refocused and, and just more hungry. I mean, that should have really stirred some motivation within some guys, and uh, I think our team has, has really handled it well since we've been back here. It's rare for a squad to be separated mid-season. It presents a unique, possibly difficult situation for UNCP coaches and players. Head coach Shane Richardson is confident it won't affect the team on the field negatively. He's also been pleased with how the players have handled the awkward break. It's been really good. Um, you know, I think a lot of them expressed uh, disappointment uh, probably over the break of it as we were communicating with them. And of course the plan changed so many times because we had no idea what was going to take place. Um, but until we kind of got face to face with them, I think everybody was uh, excited to be back into a normal routine. Uh, I think anxious is probably a good word to describe their mood and their, their tone. Um, ready to just get back on the field and, and really ready to play football again and be able to go and, and play against an opponent since it's been a little while. Two, three, four, five. Richardson's main concern during the break from Florence wasn't simply conditioning or players not being active. You have so much rhythm that you try to develop uh, over the course of going throughout the season. Uh, you're building on things and you're trying to master things and by the middle of the season, end of the season, you should be really clicking pretty well. And uh, some of that timing and chemistry and the flow of uh, some of the things that we've been learning, you know, gets disrupted. And uh, that's something that we talked about as a staff where uh, we want to be very mindful of how we go back and reintroduce and reteach and review and, and go back to some progression and uh, just kind of make sure that we're not assuming anything and make sure that we're really trying to build fundamentals and uh, make sure guys are focused on just simple things that are going to help us be confident and play fast and, and be ready to go for Saturday. Off to a one and one start, UNCP fell to Winston-Salem State week one before rebounding with a dominant home win over Elizabeth City State on September 8th. For the first time in three weeks, the Braves are back on the field tonight hosting Newberry. The Wolves are two and two on the year, winning their last two at home after opening the season 0 and two. Newberry averages just a tad under 200 rushing yards per game. Well, I think they're very dangerous, and I think they, uh, you're right, their offense can really run the ball. I think they've got a great running back. I think they've uh, got really big guys up front, and they've got a quarterback that can really um, probably hurt you in, in multiple ways and very athletic. And so uh, they do a lot of things offensively that really has to keep you on your toes. And uh, we've got to be ready to play really good defense, and uh, they're going to be a tough team. They usually are. The Wolves already have three rushers with more than 150 yards on the ground this season, led by junior running back Austin Barnes. Also, sophomore quarterback Greg Ruff has rushed for about 50 yards per game so far. Last year, the Braves fell to Newberry 28-6. In that game, UNCP was held to just 77 yards of offense in the second half. Uh, we really respect how they've uh, played in the past and of course we went to their place last year and uh, they got the best of us pretty good and, and so we know that uh, they're capable of being a very good football team so we've got to be ready for them. Tonight's game for UNCP is the first of two straight home games. The Braves host Wingate next Saturday. In tonight's clash with Newberry at 7 p.m. at Grace P. Johnson Stadium, Richardson hopes his team takes full advantage of the opportunity, but will also give the Brave Nation community a show. I think, uh, you know, the right way to explain it, and this is what we talked about to our team, is we want to play inspired football. And uh, having two opportunities taken from us, we've got seven left, 
And for these seniors, you know, this is their last go around and they got two that are gone from them just like that. And really for anybody, I mean, we never know when the opportunity is going to be taken from us. And uh, inspired football is what we should be playing. I mean, there's no reason we can't give everything that we can from just a focus, an effort, a willingness to do uh, whatever it takes to be our best for each other. Uh, let the way that we play show um, really just kind of what it means to us to be back and to be playing in front of the home fans and uh, to have thankful hearts about the situation and to also have understanding and empathy towards those that were maybe less fortunate. And uh, and we want to we want to just really honor the situation by the way that we play and give our best. Hurricane Florence knocked UNCP soccer's schedule out of whack as well. Prior to the storm, the defending Peach Belt champion Braves were off to a strong start at 2-1. Two, Two non-conference games were lost due to Florence. Three Peach Belt games were also rescheduled. Additionally, Wednesday's non-conference game at Catawba was called early due to lightning, a no contest. Head coach Lars Anderson and his players keep the bigger picture in mind. Went through a similar situation in 2016, so some of our veteran players uh, know how to deal with this. But I, I think uh, we got a lot of cerebral kids. We got a lot of kids that, that have understand the bigger picture. They understand that when they put this uniform on, when they represent uh, UNC Pembroke, they represent a, not only women's soccer, but the athletic department, uh, this university and this area. And I think uh, the resilience uh, that we've seen from people in, in this area, uh, both in 2016 and this time around during Hurricane F uh, Florence, uh, we, we hope uh, that we embody that. We hope that uh, we show the people who have been affected by Florence that, that there is life after Florence and we hope to be part of that process of the rebuilding process. And, and, and ours is a very small part and we have been very fortunate. Yes, we missed 14 days of training, but you know what? The big scheme of things, uh, uh, you know, there are people who are dealing with a lot bigger issues. We understand that. We understand the bigger picture, but we're going to try to do our part in, in, in helping this area, helping this university uh, rebuild. And, and, and we think we understand what our role is in that process. The Braves had three players volunteer in Pembroke at the Caring Touch Home Health Center to assist in packing boxes of supplies and food for those in need in wake of the hurricane. Stacy Scott, Carly Rochelle, and Christine Wolfs. As a team, prior to Wednesday, UNCP's last real game on the pitch was September 8th. The storm also forced players and coaches apart all over the state, breaking the routine and focus on the quest for another Peach Belt title. Well, we communicated daily with our players. We have uh, uh, quite a few players, uh, uh, almost half of our team that live in areas that were heavily affected. We have had players uh, on our team who have uh, suffered loss of property, uh, n not devastating loss, but, but some loss of property. Uh, and uh, we're, we're sensitive to that. We were obviously concerned about their well-being. We communicated daily through our Group Me app and made sure that players were safe, made sure that players uh, had food, water, all the essentials. And, and uh, you know, I think we kept very close tabs on, on our players. And as a coach, I dealt a lot with the rescheduling and the continued rescheduling. So it certainly wasn't a 14-day you know, vacation for any of us. I, I think we've worked through this, and the players that were in areas that were not heavily affected by Hurricane Florence, we tried to make sure that they understood that you have a responsibility now to go home and train, keep up with your schoolwork, get ahead in your schoolwork. Uh, uh, if you're on Chapter 4, read Chapter 5, 6, and 7. So I, I don't think anybody saw this as a uh, you know, vacation in, in, in any sense. Anderson admits the team's time apart poses a great challenge but he has faith in his talented squad. I, I'm a positive person. I, I choose to see this as a, you know, a challenge, but, but uh, you know, I, I once had a drill sergeant when I was in the military who said, uh, you can get bogged down on focusing on the problem or you can find a way to find the solution. And we're going to find a solution. We know what the problem is. We identify the problem. We haven't trained in 14 days. Now, what's the solution? And, and uh, uh, we're, we're going to try to coach smart. We're going to try to make sure that we sub maybe a little bit more than we have. We're going to try to slowly ease our kids back into uh, trying to get you know, gain back the 14 days that were lost. But to be fair, like I said, I, I think quite a few of our kids did train on their own during the 14 days that, that we were uh, apart. So I don't think the step is as big as we think it is. UNCP hits the ground running with a crucial PBC game Saturday on the road as the Braves visit Flagler. Braves and Saints battled to a double overtime tie last season. 
Anderson admits the game with Flagler will be a challenge, but it's a no-excuse mentality for UNCP. We're just thrilled to be back together. We love each other on this team. Uh, we, we enjoy spending time together, uh, and, and we enjoy training together, being together. So I think the kids are just uh, happy to be back here. They love this area. They love this campus. Uh, uh, and, and, and I think they're, they're, there's a positive vibe around this team. There's nothing negative about this. We're not going to allow this to be uh, a distraction. Uh, it's not going to be an excuse. You will never hear us say, well, because of Hurricane Florence, we didn't in 2016, and we finished second in the league in 2016. Uh, we're going to use this as a springboard, and, 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 and we'll grow from this and get better from this. UNCP's next home game is Tuesday, October 2nd versus Converse. For now, Anderson and the Braves have a message for Brave Nation. I, I just like to make sure that people who have been affected by Hurricane Florence understand uh, how much we're, we're, we're thinking about you, how much we care about you, and, and if there's anything that we can do in the recovery process. I know I had some kids who... Uh, went and volunteered today. We will continue to pitch in where we can. Uh, we're, we're in this together. We're in this for the long haul, and, and we understand our role on, on this campus, in this community, and we will do our part, and, and we will keep people in our thoughts and prayers for sure. The UNCP Braves volleyball team returned to campus this week to resume their season after having two weeks worth of matches and practices washed away due to Hurricane Florence. Despite not being able to have the team in one centralized location, head coach Ellen McGill was still able to stay in contact with her team to ensure each player's safety and communicate how and when they were going to get back to campus. So as far as communicating with our team, we have a group message that um, we just tried to make sure that all of the, we were updating them as as much as possible, letting them know what the situation was on campus and when we think we would be able to come back together as a team. Now back in practicing after a two-week hiatus, Miguel understands it will be hard to get back into the flow of things, but thinks overall the team should benefit from the extra rest. Oh yeah, definitely a little rusty, um, but I think the break was actually really good for us. Um, we should be the most rested team in the Peach Belt right now. Um, which was great. We had, you know, some nagging things that were supposed starting to come up for us um, as far as just wear and tear from the season. And so I think the break could be a really positive thing for us and we can really reset on the season moving forward and nothing but positive things um, onward. Not only did the squad lose two weeks of practice thanks to the storm, they also had five matches impacted as well. Overall, three matches were postponed and two were canceled due to the hurricane, which has created a bit of a scheduling crunch, but that doesn't have McGill worried. I have one game we had to reschedule on a Monday, so that'll throw our schedule off just a little bit, but um, for the most part, we were able to reschedule on some Saturdays and a Tuesday, so shouldn't be anything that we um, shouldn't be able to handle. One of the games postponed by Florence was the Braves Peach Belt Conference opener against USC Aiken. That game was postponed, but now the Braves will commence Peach Belt play on Friday, September 28th against Augusta. Yeah, so we're super excited to get conference started. Um, two really good teams coming in this weekend uh, for us to be able to have success. We just have to believe in ourselves and um, play together as a team. Do I see our team facing challenges ahead? Sure I do, but I wouldn't want to endure those challenges with anyone else. You see, for the second time in two years, many of us have had to deal with evacuation, property damage, power outages, water outages, and in turn have experienced several restless nights. Carolinas were still recovering from Hurricane Matthew and now must face the daunting hurdles left behind by Hurricane Florence. We have missed practice, class, and games. Yet, more challenges still lie ahead this season. However, I know our community at home and at school will face far greater challenges. I pray that we can all push through this and play for the communities that we keep near and dear to our hearts. Please support and pray for our teams this season as we begin to play and travel across the East Coast. To Robson County, to our beloved coastline, and for the rest of the Carolinas. I know we can get through this. We are strong. We are tough. We are brave.